Community Access Television coverage of the 2019 MIAA Western Mass Division II Softball Semifinals. Number seven, Frontier Red Hawks. Number three, Hoosa Hurricanes here at Elaine Sortino Field here at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. My name is Jeff Terrell and the rest of the Frontier Community Access Television crew here as the Red Hawks go for, I guess you would say an unlikely but very exciting possibility playing for a Western Mass title on Saturday afternoon here at Sortino Field. But first, we have to get past number three, Husik. A cool gray day here, quite windy and a little bit of drizzle falling right now, but one day late we are set for softball action. And now the introduction of the starting lineups for the Red Hawks. There's Olivia Dean, the pitcher, Lily Spencer, her battery mate before her. Natalie Denkevitz, the center fielder. Maddie Fifield hits cleanup. Ariana Walker, the left fielder, hitting number five. Mandy Fuller playing second base, hits number six. Macy Ring, the shortstop, number seven, hitting eighth. Third baseman is CC Green. Emily Sullivan, the right fielder, batting ninth for the Frontier Red Hawks. Number seven seed, 15 and seven, the big upset win in the quarterfinal round to punch their ticket for UMass. Syra Bradley is the center fielder for Husik, leading off number six, you see right there. Ryland Witek. Maddie Pupolo is the pitcher, a very good one. The Hawks will have to deal with her. Kelsey Worley's in right field. That's Logan Stansfield, the shortstop, coming out now. Riley Bishop, she'll be taking deliveries from Pupolo. Katie Brayman, the first baseman. Lauren Fauché is in left field, hitting eighth. And Abby Bird, playing second base, hits ninth. Number three seed. Husik Hurricanes at 16 and five. And now we pause for the playing of our national anthem.
All right, so watching the Frontier girls during the anthem, and they look ready. You, you want to have a good balance between game face and also having fun out there. It's a, it's a fine balance. You don't want to be too sharp. You don't want to be too tight. You don't want to be too lax. The one thing that often tells the tale when you get to this point in the tournament, when you're on the big stage here at UMass, defense, executing defensive plays. The teams that can do so, generally speaking, are the ones that advance and the teams that have a tough time and maybe end up throwing the ball around the infield, miss cutoff plays, whatever it might be, not covering bases, those are the ones that oftentimes see their seasons come to an end. In the case of the seniors, see their high school careers come to an end. The stakes are high. The winner of this game will advance to the Western Mass Division II Championship against the winner of today's second game, a scheduled five o'clock start time here at Sortino Field. Number one, Hampshire. Number four, Wakona. So that's another Valley versus the Berkshires matchup. Oftentimes the Berkshires get the better of the matchup, but this Frontier team, they are playing their best softball of the season at the very perfect time Late regular season, I know it was very an, an eye-opening effort on the road against Greenfield late in the regular season. They did drop that game to the Lady Way, but they took Greenfield right to the seventh inning before the Wave won in walk-off fashion. But they gave the Green Wave everything they wanted, and ironically, Greenfield's season is over in the quarterfinal round. And here are the Hawks, one victory away from a Western Mass final. And we are just about set to go here. Again, it is a cool gray day. There is a chance of some showers. It's quite breezy. I'm looking at the center field flag. It is blowing, not straight out, kind of lazily towards right center field. 190 feet down the lines here. 220 feet to straightaway center field. And Red Hawk catcher Lily Spencer steps in on the right side against Matty Pupolo. And here's the first pitch, and we are underway. Ball one. Nice crowd on hand here, despite the threatening skies. Husik is here a lot. Frontier, not so much. 1-0 to Spencer. Down to first, taken easily there by Katie Brayman. And very quickly, one down here in the Red Hawk first inning. Here's pitcher Olivia Dean stepping in on the right side. And she is on a roll right now in the circle and at the plate. Pupolo's first pitch, first ball swinging. Oh, a change up. She was a little out ahead of that one. 0 and 1. Now the breeze picking up even a little more again towards right center field. Pupolo gets her signal. Fastball swung on a mist. And Olivia Dean quickly in an 0-2 hole on deck. Natalie Denkevitz, the center fielder. If she can reach, or if someone can get on base, Maddie Fifield, the cleanup batter, would bat. No balls and two strikes. And the count goes to one and two. You can hear the wind blowing through the microphones here. And definitely jacket weather here in mid-June. The one-two. Ground ball, base hit in the right field. Bobbled momentarily by the right fielder, Casey Worley, but she gets it in. A one-out single by Olivia Dean. And Natalie Denkovitz, the center fielder, will step in on the right side. And looks like we are going to get a courtesy runner for the uh, Hawks. Olivia Vasilio is going to be the courtesy runner at first base for Olivia Dean. One out, runner on first. Davids takes it low, ball one. Now if you don't see a lot of high school softball. There's all kinds of ways to get it done in the circle. This girl, Pupolo, very, very fast. 
That's in there for a strike. One and one. One out, runner on first. That's the courtesy runner for the pitcher, Dean. Frontier would love to get the early advantage here today. Change up, swung and a missed. One ball and two strikes. Dinkovitz. Now we'll have to guard that plate. Down one and two. Kupalo gets the sign into her motion. And that's grounded wide a third. So Dinkovitz hanging in there at one and two. The Division II softball title game will be on Saturday afternoon here at Sortino Field. Winner of this game and the winner of Wakona, Hampshire. That'll be a four o'clock scheduled first pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Now I say a four o'clock first pitch. That's the third of three games here on Saturday. So depending on how the first two games go, that game may start on time. It may start a little late. Two, two in the dirt. Nice job there by Denkovic. She fell behind, but now she has worked the count full at three and two. Runner on first. One out here, top one, seven inning game. The payoff pitch. And that is foul down the line. All right, heads up down there by the batting cage. Count remains one and two. That frontier bench. They are into it, they are vocal, and that can work. You can sometimes get to the pitcher. 3-2, that's in there for a called straight three. Throw goes all the way in the center field. No one was covering on the attempted steal, and all the way into third base goes the runner. Vesselio now is in scoring position, but now with two outs after the strikeout, and now we will see our first big offensive moment of the game for either side, and it's gonna be Matty Fifield with a runner, It'll be the first one of the game on third base. Let's see if Maddie can bring her in. Right-handed batter, as you see. That pitch is in the dirt. Nice block there by the catcher, Riley Bishop, to keep that run, keep that runner right on third. One and oh the count. If Fifield keeps it going, Ariana Walker, the left fielder, will bat. Next pitch, that is low. Quick throw to third, they got her hung up. Quick throw home, and she's out. That'll end it here on the top half of the first inning. A threat by Frontier, but they run into an out, and that'll end the inning. It'll now be Husik batting, bottom one here in Amherst. We are scoreless on Frontier Community Access Television. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Bobby C's DJ service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Great opportunity for Frontier in the top half of the first inning, but the courtesy runner Vesselio ended up getting hung up between third and home and made a mad dash trying to score, but was put out there. And now here come the Hoosa Hurricanes for their first at bat. Syra Bradley, the center fielder, number six, will lead off. And Olivia Dean, who has been so strong this whole season, really, but particularly 
in the postseason. And she would love to get a nice clean inning, put up a zero on there to begin the game, uh, to begin this game. Now the home plate umpire has come over to the frontier bench. Not sure what the conversation is. Yeah, they're still talking. And I'm trying to see what is happening here. We are not. Actually, I don't think the home plate umpire. <laughs> now the PA announcer has called the home plate umpire over and we're gonna eavesdrop on the conversation. Okay, they clarified something. This might be something I'll have to catch up with after game. I was kind of craning my neck over towards the booth here, trying to hear what was being said. But we are set to go. Syra Bradley will lead off for the Hurricanes. This is a, a pretty good offensive team. They really know more as pitching and a very good defensive team, but they can hit as well. Bradley will try to get it going against Olivia Dean. First ball swinging. Oh, and won the count. And again, we'll see if the Red Hawks can come up with a strong defensive effort. As Dean is not a huge strikeout pitcher, she'll get her fair share of Ks, but usually the opposition will put the ball into play and that's where the defense comes into play. One ball and one strike the count. We're playing the last half of the first inning. We are scoreless. The 1-1. One, one. one ball and two strikes. Wind really whipping out towards right center field here. Anything hitting the air that way is gonna get a little bit of a ride here. The one, two. Strike three, ball is dropped. They'll have to get the put out at first base, and they do. So Bradley goes down on strikes, and then two to three on the put out at first base. Rylan Wytek. Left-handed hitting, third baseman for the Hurricanes. On deck is the pitcher, Maddie Pupolo. Just outside on that first pitch, you saw Lily Spencer, the catcher, hold it there for a, an extra beat. But it was just off the black, 1-0. Foul back to the screen. And the count even now at 1-1. One and one. Quick turnaround for the winner of this game as they're gonna be playing for a Western Mass title tomorrow afternoon. This is a Saturday afternoon. That pitch is in the dirt, two and one. So a break of, well it's a four o'clock first pitch, so a break of uh, less than 24 hours by the time this game is over. With a two one, and that's foul back to the screen bouncing right back towards the plate. Two balls and two strikes. One out here in the last half of the first inning. Frontier got a runner to third with two outs in the first, did not score. And the next pitch, just outside and Spencer really held it that time. And she's working to get the call. And the count has gone full. Here's the payoff pitch to Wytek. That is outside, ball four. One out base runner for the Hurricanes. Maddie Pupolo, the pitcher. And like her counterpart for Frontier, Livia Dean. Very productive, obviously, in the circle and at the dish. He's a very good hitter. That is low, quick shot at first. Back safely is Wytek. One out, runner on first. We are scoreless. Pupolo takes it inside. Lily Spencer with another shot at first. Back easily is Wytek. Two balls and no strikes. Pupolo in 
the batter's box. This next pitch, right down Broadway for a strike. They throw down the second, and over the head, they actually would have had her hung up, but the throw was high, and into second base it goes Wytak. So she's in scoring position now with one down in a 2-1 count to Pupilo. On deck is Kelsey Worley, the right fielder and cleanup batter. That pitch is high, three and one now. And Olivia now just trying to work on getting a consistent release point. That's a big part of the battle. That pitch looks good, it's hammered in the air to center field, tracking it back over the head of the center fielder. This is going to score the first run of the afternoon, a RBI hit. Pupilo brings in the first run of the game. It is one nothing in favor of Husek. That one just kept sailing on the center fielder, Dankowicz. She had it, looked like she had it in her sights, but it just kept carrying. Got a little bit of a boost from the breeze to dead center field. One nothing in favor of the Hurricanes. Spencer out to chat with Dean. Olivia now back in the circle. Kelsey Worley is the right fielder, batting cleanup. And the first pitch to her. And that is low for a ball, one and oh. Two and zero is now the count. Right, On deck, Logan Stansfield, the shortstop, stole only one out here. Runner on second. The pitch, swung on a miss. Nice pitch there by Dean. Count goes to two and one. The 2 1 pitch. Fouled at the plate, 2 and 2 now. So, nice job here by Olivia Dean battling back from a 2 0 count. It's now even at 2 and 2. Runner on second with one out. Dean's got the early advantage. Dean would like to keep that number one. Right there it is. That's a ground ball down towards shortstop. Oh, and there's, a, yeah, the runner is going to be out. Made a collision, made contact with the shortstop as, uh, yeah, Macy Ring was <laughs> looking to make the play. So, basically got uh, run right into it. So that's an easy interference call on the base runner. So two outs now, and a runner on first base. And Logan Stansfield, the shortstop, will now step in. This pitch is popped in the air to shell away. This could be trouble, but coming in and catching it in stride, nicely done there by Sullivan. All right, we now go to the top half of the second inning. And our score now, it is Usyk 1 and Frontier nothing on Frontier Community Access Television. Did you say he was just asking Frontier Red Hawks now coming up, top half of the second inning, trailing by a score of one to nothing. And an RBI double by Maddie Pupilo in the first inning. And it's Maddie Fifield, first baseman leading off. Frontier did get a runner to third in the first, unable to score. Here's the first pitch to Fifield, and that's fouled at the plate. 0-1. We'll have to see how this plays out as this game goes along, but. Pupilo basically is around the plate. You really can't be too patient here. This next pitch, hammered on the ground, down the shortstop. Nice play there. Stansfield over to Brayman. Fifield is out, there's one out. So again, 
That was a strike. There are some pitchers who struggle with their control, and what you want to do there is just be very patient, obviously not help them out. This girl, Pupo, unless something changes, she's going to be right around the dish most of this afternoon. That being said, Frontier needs to swing the bats. So I like what Fifield did there. Got a good pitch hit, hit it hard. They hit it right to shortstop. First ball swinging down the right field side, and that ball is out of play for Ariana Walker, the left fielder, so she falls behind 0-1. She's so mad. She got, the, she got the day off yesterday. She literally traded yesterday for today. Yeah. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Walker falls behind 0-2. One down, nobody on. Top two. Kusik one, Frontier nothing. Yeah, I don't get it. You think so when it cut out after it? Pupolo, it's a fly. Try to go for the changeup. That was high. Nice job by Walker laying off that one. One and two. On deck is Mandy Fuller, the second baseman. Which is outside. Two balls and two strikes with one out. Line drive right through the center of the field, right past the pitcher Pupolo in the center field. A one out single by Ariana Walker. So the tying runs on first with one down. And Mandy Fuller. Playing second base this afternoon, steps in. It was a very hard hit ball by Walker. She squares the bunt, pulls it back, throw down the second, stolen base by Walker, easily. And now the tying run in scoring position with only one down here. Good chance here again for the Hawks. They are going to do their best to stick with this Hoosa Hurricane team. They are the acknowledged favorite in this game, but this bunt is laid down nicely. It's going to stay fair. They're going to throw to first. Gutter there for the second out. That ball was probably going to roll foul. That was a good play by Hoosa to get the out. So two outs. Moving up to third is Walker. So for the second consecutive inning, the Red Hawks. With a runner on third with two outs, they weren't able to get the run in last time. We'll see if Macy Ring, the shortstop, can get this run in. And the Frontier crowd really into it. That's a ball, one and all. If Ring can keep it going, CC Green at third base will bat next. The 1-0. That is high. Quick shot at third. Ooh. A little close, but getting back in there was Ariana Walker. Frontier did have uh, the courtesy runner get hung up between third and home last game. Don't want to give out, give away any outs. This pitch is fouled back to the screen. Count goes to two and one. Who's a, a number three seed at 16 and five. Frontier with a similar record at 15 and seven. That acknowledged tougher competition up there in the Berkshires. Nice change up there. Out ahead of it was Ring. Now, now even at two and two. Deuces a wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on third here in the second. Calls timeout briefly to get a good toe hold in there. The 2-2, two -two, that's Bolden basically. Nice stop again by Riley Bishop, the catcher. That ball goes away, it could be a run. Now we have to let you know, you probably can see on the camera, depending on what, what camera angle we're showing, it, there's not a lot of space between the catcher and the backstop. So on a wild pitch, not necessarily will the run score. Sometimes it comes right back to the catcher and it's an easy play at the play. Here's the 3-2, ground ball down the third. Glove there, over to first base. White Tech to Brayman, 
And for a second consecutive inning, Frontier strands a runner on third. We go to the last of the second inning. And our score, Busick one and Frontier nothing. This is Frontier Community Access Television. Riley Bishop, the Hoosick catcher, will lead off for the Hurricanes in the last half of the second inning. Canes leading by a score of one to nothing. They scored in the first on an RBI double by the pitcher, Bupalo. Frontier getting a runner to third base in the first inning, unable to score. Got a runner to third in the second inning, unable to score. And now the idea for Olivia Dean and her defense put up another zero. Here's the first pitch to Bishop. Right down Broadway, strike in. It'll be Bishop, Brayman, and Fauche, the six, seven, eight batters for the Hurricanes. And that pitch. What was it called? A little bit of a delay call. Is it one and one? One and one, I believe, is the count. Yep, the 1-1, one, one. that is inside, two balls and one strikes. And I see that the Hampshire Raiders have arrived. You can hear their cleats on the uh, aluminum path up above us in the bleachers. They're playing in the next game here, they're the number one seed. That pitch is low and inside, three balls and one strike. Dean does not want to get the lead person on here. Always want to begin the inning cleanly. That pitch is high. A five-pitch walk to Bishop. She will trot down to first base. Now batting to the Hurricanes, playing first base, number eight, Katie Brayman. Katie Brayman, the first baseman. Number seven batter. We're going to get a courtesy runner, I think, for Bishop, perhaps. Yes, we are. Number five, Emily Glazier. And that's Emma Glazier, an eighth grader, number 15, who will be Bishop. the courtesy runner on first base Glazier for Bishop. Running for, Bishop. for those of you who uh, don't follow high school softball, courtesy runner, it's not the same as a pinch runner in baseball. In baseball, you get pinch hit for or pinch run for, you're out of the game. In softball, pinch runner, Bishop will be back catching next half inning. They squared a bunt. Nicely played, third base side, unable to make the play. And reaching first base, two on with nobody out to begin the second inning here in a one nothing game. Number eight batter, Lauren Fauche. She's the left fielder. Spells her name F-A-U-C-H-E-R, Fauche. French pronunciation, she will square the bunt. Fouls it back to the screen, 0-1. So now we're in a situation where the Frontier defense is going to be moving around here. And they need to know where they are going with the ball. Third baseman will be coming in hard. That's CC Green, which means Ring, the shortstop, should be covering third. They squared a bunt. Nicely played at first base. They get the out there. Nice bunt, but also nice execution by the Frontier D. Runners now on second and third with the one out. A little bit of small ball here, and now bottom of the order, Abby Bird, the second baseman, with the leadoff batter Bradley on deck. Glazier, the courtesy runner, is on third. This pitch is fouled back over the screen out of play. No balls and one strike. And that is uh, Katie Brayman out there at second base. See if Dean can work out of it. Ideally, allow no runs, but at least don't let it become a big inning. This pitch is low, nice stop there by the catcher, Spencer. That saved a run, potentially. One ball and one strike on Bird. One out, runners on second and third. The pitch. Deep drive in the left, taken there, tagging but not scoring as Walker got it in quickly and two outs and now Back to the top of the order for the Dean Hurricanes. and Frontier are Bradley one Bradley. out away Bradley. from putting that zero we talked about up there. 
Now this is a very good Hoosick team. If you get a chance to have them strand two runners in scoring position and put a zero up there, that could be huge. Here's Bradley. Strike one. Nice pitch by Dean. These Frontier girls playing with a lot of confidence right now, as well they should. They have played very well during this tournament run. This whole season, really, but they've really upped their game. Strike two. And now we'll see where Spencer and Dean go. Do they do a waste pitch or do, or do they attack her here? The 0-2 pitch. And it goes back to the screen. This will get a run home. Wild pitch. Scoring from third is Glazier, the courtesy runner. 2-0, Husek. So they are one pitch of getting out of the inning with no run scored. Runner now moves up to third. That's Brayman. And now Frontier will look to keep it at two zip here. The one two pitch. Ground ball down the third. Nice stop, strong throw. A little bit high though, and that's going to get another run in. As reaching on the overthrow there is Bradley. And the second run of the inning scores. It's now three nothing in favor of the Hurricanes. Boy, you go back to that 0-2 pitch when we had the 0-2 count and an opportunity to get out of the inning with no run scored. And it turns out that Husik did get those two runs in. There is Wytak. A little late on that one. Foul down the third base side. 0-1. Well, for Dean in front here now, just knuckle down, get this last out, get back into the inning. Get back uh, on offense in the top of the third. We play seven innings here in high school softball. Yeah, pitch is high. Oh, the runner's hung up between first and second, but she did dart back in there. Looked, in fact, like she was intending to actually draw the throw there, and she did. One ball, one strike. And the pitch. This is popped up right in front of the mound, and it is taken there by Dean herself, and the side is retired. But two runs for Husik. We now go to the last, uh, the top half of the third inning. It is now Husik three, Frontier nothing on Frontier Community Access Television. We will see now how the Frontier offense responds. They're in a 3-0 hole here as they bat here on the top of the third inning. The CC Green batting inside, nearly gutter. And the count is one and two on her. Jeff Terrell here on play-by-play -play coverage. Megan to my side, got Alec right above me, and Kevin Murphy, one of the camera out in center field. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. As the Hawks continue their tremendous postseason run, they would love to keep it going at least one more time. Play for a Western Mass title. That pitch is fouled back. It's still one and two. Two green. On deck for Frontier is the right fielder, Vesselio. And then back to the top of the order in Lily Spencer. See if Frontier can get a base runner. Hoopalo deals just inside. Green, good job of taking that. Two balls and two strikes. We're actually going to take a look with the first base umpire. That's uh, B.J. Guerin down there. And B.J. says, no, she held up. The 2-2, line drive, base hit, right field. Frontier's hitting the ball hard. I mean, a couple of these hits, they've got three hits on the afternoon, and they are, they are definitely matching the speed of Pupolo here. Olivia Vasilio, Vasilio. Olivia Vasilio, junior right fielder. Squares to bunt, that is foul, 0-1. The C 
Celio. Back in the box. Owen won the counter here. We'll see if she squares to bunt again. Nope, swing it away. That pitch is high, one and one. Looking down at third base now for the sign. We'll see how much Frontier puts some pressure on the defense here. See if they're gonna send the runner here, get the infield moving around. That's fouled away on the right side. Count now goes to one and two. Lily Spencer, the catcher and leadoff batter, is on deck. Usyk three. Frontier nothing here in the third. The pitch. That's a line drive base hit into left field. Moving up to second base is Green. Two on with nobody out. Frontier's got something cooking. And Lily Spencer, top of the order, will bat. Golden opportunity here. I mean, it was one thing when the Hawks had runners on, had a runner on third in the first and second inning, but that was with two outs in both occasions. This time it's two on with nobody out. So an even better situation for the Hawks. 1-0 the count to Spencer. On deck is Olivia Dean. In there for a strike. One and one. Here's a pretty sizable gap I can see out there in right center field. That pitch is foul tipped at the plate by Spencer. Count now goes to one and two. So really a lot of uh, speed in terms of the pitcher out there, Pupolo. And if Spencer can go the other way, I mean, there is just a huge gap. The center fielder has swung quite a ways over towards left center field. See if she takes a shot that way. The pitch, that is high. Two balls and two strikes. Runners on first and second base with nobody out. Spencer back in there. The 2-2. Outside, and the count has gone full. Good at bat by Spencer. Now she's a catcher, she knows this umpire's strike zone. That's the benefit when you're a catcher. When you go for your plate appearance, you pretty much know what the deal is. Deep drive, left field, down the line, it is gone! Three run home run by Spencer. And we're tied at three. That ball was crushed, absolutely tattooed. That clears the bases. And we're back even Steven. Well, I talked about that gap in right center field, but if you get a pitch that's yeah, right down Broadway, why not pull it? And why not pull it right over the wall? The pitcher, number nine, Olivia Dean. Still nobody out here, and Olivia Dean now batting for the Hawks. Now Pupolo has to answer the call here. That pitch is high. Now she's really going to hear from that frontier bench. Any kind of pitch that uh, shows us she's struggling a little bit, they're going to be all over her. On deck for Frontier, Natalie Denkovitz. The pitch, that is high, 2-0. and oh. Frontier has five hits in this game now, and really all five hits have been solid. None more so than that home run, obviously, but there have been no cheap hits. They are actually hitting Pupolo quite well so far. That pitch. There's a ball, three balls and no strikes. And you can hear above me, more softball players making their way into the ballpark. There's a line drive to left field, over the head of the left fielder, Fauche, into second base with a stand-up double is Olivia Dean. 
Another hard hit ball by Frontier. Dean will exit to a courtesy runner. Number 11, Chloe Cutting, running for the pitcher. Chloe Dean. Cutting, Cutting freshman, will be the courtesy runner here. Now batting for the Red Hawks, playing center field, number 21, Natalie Denkovich. Denkovich now will bat. Runner on scoring, uh, running in, runner in scoring position on second with still nobody out here. Big inning for Frontier. They can take a lead here at the falling behind three zip. Pitches up and in. Not sure who the number two pitcher would be for Husek. I'm sure they're going to go with Pupilo quite a bit. I mean, she's their unquestioned star today. That pitch is in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Number seven, Frontier. I mean, at this point, I guess we've reached the point where you can just forget about the seeds and the records. It's just a good team against a good team. That pitch is high. Three balls and no strikes. So we will see. I'm, I'm guessing she's going to be taking here. But that's been contradicted before. That pitch is right down the middle. Three and one the count. Still a good hitter's count here. The 3-1, that is high by a lot. First and second, still nobody out here. And coming up is Matty Fifield. And now the Husa coach is calling timeout. He needs to talk to his pitcher and he's gonna bring in the infield. Major struggle here. I mean, honestly, it did not look all that good for Frontier after that last half inning as they surrendered those three runs. And they have a pretty fast pitcher that they're going up against, but they have been, uh, the bats, they've been hitting the ball right on the screws, folks, here this afternoon so far. Not one cheap hit out of the six that they have on the afternoon. And Dean has done a good job of pitching out of trouble. She did have, uh, the two run score with two outs in the last half inning. But they are putting a lot of pressure on the higher seed here. And hopefully the umpire breaks up the conference and we are set to go. And Matty Fifield, the first baseman, steps in with runners on first and second with no one out. 3-3 three, three tie here in the third. That pitch is a ball, 1-0. People are now really having trouble finding the plate here. And the 1-0. That is high, 2-0. That last pitch, I mean, she really let that one fly. But it seems like she's struggling a little bit with the release point. That pitch is in there for a strike. Right at the letters. Count goes to two and one. And really, the psychology of pitching, just even getting that called strike is going to help Pupilo. If she can get an out here, obviously, that will get her calmed down. They squared a bunt right back to the mound. Quick throw to first. Nice job there by Fifield. Got that bunt down. Runners move up now to second and third. Dankovitz is out there on second. And the courtesy runner cutting is on third. One down, and here comes Ariano Walker, the left fielder. Frontier and Husik tied at three. A single run in the first, two in the second for Husik. Three runs here in the third for the Hawks. Hit in the left center field. This is gonna fall for a hit. This is going to score two. Two runs single by Walker, and she moves up on the throw. 5-3 Red Hawks. Another hard hit ball. And Mandy Fuller 
playing second base will step in. Walker on second. One out, 5-3 Frontier. That pitch is high, 1-0. Next pitch, and that is taken. It's another ball, it's 2-0. Still only one out here. Fuller pulls the bat back. Swinging, popping it into right field. And making the catch out there is Worley. Tagging and moving up is Walker. She's on third with two outs now. And a sacrifice fly. Shortstop, number 14, Macy Ring. Ring. And Macy Ring is batting. This will be the ninth batter of the inning for Frontier. So they have batted around. Uh, they've just about batted around. And they have put up a five spot. The pitch, ground ball in the left field. 6-3 Red Hawks. RBI single by Ring. And the Hawks are now up by three. They have brought their bats here today. Number 23, CC Green. Green. And Green started this all off. And a ground ball right back to the mound. Little shuffle to first base, and finally the inning is over. But a big six run outburst by the Red Hawks. We now go to the last half of the third inning. It is 6-3 Frontier on Frontier Community Access Television. Ten batters for Frontier in the third inning. And six of them scored. Three run home run by Lily Spencer. Two run double by Ariana Walker, RBI single by Macy Ring. And there you go, Olivia Dean, you've got a three run lead here. As Husa comes to bat here in the last of the third inning. First pitch in there for a called strike. This is the pitcher Maddie Pupolo batting. He struggled in the circle the last half inning trying to Get it going at the bat. There's a drive deep to center field, and that's gonna go on one hop off the wall. Lead off double for Pupolo. Here in the third. A lot of people Bellator felt like this might be a rather low scoring game. <laughs> Not so far. 6-3 Hawks, but here come the Hurricanes again. Kelsey Worley, the right fielder, steps in. The pitch, grounded at the plate. And that's a foul ball. It actually, I think, hit off the batter. If it had hit off of her while she was out of the batter's box, she would have been automatically out with no advancement by the runner. However, she was still in the box. So it's just a foul ball. And the pitch, swung on a missed. Strike two, 0 and 2 the count. Eight hits for Frontier so far. And basically they are all hit at least reasonably hard. Some of them are hit very hard. High pitch grounded down to second base. This will move up the runner to third as Worley is out. So the runner goes to third with one out. That is Pupolo, the pitcher. And now batting will be Logan Stansfield, the shortstop. Number 13, Logan Stansfield. Stansfield. If Frontier can win this one, they'll play either number one Hampshire or number four Wakona for the Western Mass title. Saturday, four o'clock here at UMass. And we got a ways to go here. Called strike, quick shot at third, diving back. It's Pupolo. Stansfield back in the box. And the pitch. 
fouled at the plate. 0-2 the count to Stansfield on deck. Riley Bishop the catcher. And the next pitch. This is Pop towards first base, taken there. That's the second out of the inning. That ball had a lot of spin on that, but Fifield was able to glove it. And still standing on third with her hands on her hips, wanting desperately to score is Matty Pupolo. Here comes Bishop trying to get the big two out hit here. And she takes a called strike. Nice, easy delivery by Dean. She's throwing strikes for the most part. Her counterpart, Pupolo, had a lot of trouble finding the plate in the top half of the third. And when she did, the Hawks were all over it. Here's the next pitch. Popped in the air into shallow left. This could be trouble, but coming on is Walker and puts it away. And they strand a runner on third. We go to the fourth inning. It is Frontier 6 and Husik 3. Frontier Community Access Television. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Frontier batting here, top of the fourth inning. They lead by a score of six to three. And Vesselio is at the plate with a no two count. Pupolo deals, hammered foul right near the Husik dugout. And the count now goes, uh, count remains 0-2. And that's a called strike three. One down, so Pupolo didn't get the first out of the last half inning until three runs had already come in on that home run by Spencer. And speaking of Spencer, Lily is at the dish right now. And her home run was an absolute shot. Way ahead of that one. Owen won the county. She is, <laughs> she is smiling as she uh, walks out of the batter's box. She knew she got a little fooled on that one. So a little bit of redemption there by Pupolo after giving up the dinger last, uh, last inning. Base hits a right field. Another hit by Spencer. So a one out runner on first base. And here comes the pitcher, Olivia Dean. We are going to get a courtesy runner. Michaela Santos, a freshman, Santos, will run for the, catcher, Spencer. For the Red Santos, Hawks. For Spencer. 
Coach Gardeen came out to uh, make that announcement to our home plate umpire here. And it has turned noticeably cooler here today. And the wind's making it feel even cooler. It does not feel like mid-June in New England at all. The pitch, line drive in the hole into left field. Another hit for Dean. Two on with one out here. And they're getting the Pupolo yet again. Looks like the shortstop was actually taking a step towards second base to cover. She was likely not going to come up with that anyway. Chloe Cutting will be the courtesy runner for the pitcher, Dean, at first base. So we have a couple of courtesy runners out there right now. Santos is on second base. Cutting is on first, one out. And the batter for Frontier is Dankowitz, the center fielder. And she takes a strike, 0-1. One out, two on. 6-3 Hawks. Line drive in the right center field. The base said this is going to score at least one run. Santos scores easily. They will hold cutting at third. Moving up on the throw is Dinkowitz. RBI single for her, 7-3 Red Hawks. Now batting for Frontier. Playing first base, number 15, Maddie Fifield. Fifield. And Maddie Fifield now will try to bring home a couple more. Runners are on second and third. And the pitch, that is inside. 1-0, and 11 hits on the game for the Hawks, according to the scoreboard there. That is, that is amazing, only halfway through. I mean, they are really piling on the offense here. That pitch is high, 2-0. Not that they're not capable, I just don't think too many people thought they would see Frontier's offense just erupt like this. Still only one out in the inning. Fightfield digs in. The pitch, way high, 3-0. They do have the open base. On deck is Ariana Walker. Walker brought in two runs with an RBI double back in the third. Here it is, that is high. Ball four, a four pitch walk to Fifield. Bases loaded with one out. And they're gonna bring the infield in. They need to cut off the run if at all possible. Infield grounder, they're definitely going to come home with this. Try to keep this game from getting away. Pupolo on the rubber. Here's the pitch to Walker in there for a called strike, 0-1. 7-3 Frontier. It is imperative from a Husik perspective to try to get out of the sitting and keep it a four-run deficit. Hurricanes can definitely come back from that, but if Frontier can bring some more runs in, it'd be very hard for Husik to come back. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Walker. Foul back to the screen, it is 0-2. And obviously they would love the K here. That would make it two outs and the infield would go back to normal death. But they are really close. The second baseman is almost alongside the pitcher here. The 0-2 pitch, ground ball down towards short. They're gonna come home with it. It's thrown away, the run will score. The ball comes back, throwing error on the shortstop and cutting scores from third base. It is 8-3 Frontier. Base is loaded with one out. So they got the infield grounder and that was simply a case of the shortstop hurrying the throw. She knew she didn't have too, too much time. And that's what resulted in the errant throw. Hawks lead by five, Fuller now. That's in the dirt, nice stop there by the catcher, Bishop. And now stepping in, Fuller pulls the bat back. 
Ground ball right back to the mound. And they're gonna throw home again, and they got her. Nice play there by the pitcher. Went right off her. And is she okay? Yeah, she's okay. They're gonna, they're gonna check on her. I think the coach, Michael Lamine, wants to use this opportunity to check on her. It went right off her leg. It looked like on like maybe her upper thigh. Did it catch her hand as well? Yeah, that could not have felt too good. And she had the presence of mind to get the ball, make the throw. Again, it had to be a quick throw. Didn't have, uh, they're gonna give her two warm up tosses here, according to uh, BJ Gear on the base umpire. See if she's okay. Yeah, she looks fine to me. So they do record the second out of the inning at the plate. And, yep, she doesn't even need her second one. She smiles, she says, I'm good to go. So runners, uh, again, uh, are loaded, bases are loaded, but now two outs. And here comes Macy Ring. Ring had an RBI single to make it 6-3 in the third. Batting here, swung through that one and missed. And the count is 0-1. Six runs in the third, two so far here in the fourth for the Hawks. Fouled away. Count goes to 0-2. If Ring can keep it going, CC Green will bat. No balls and two strikes to Macy Ring. The pitch, that is low. Stopped there by Bishop, nicely. One and two. And I just saw the coach, Coach Amin say, hey, if you make the block and you happen to notice a runner who took too much of a lead, don't be afraid to take a shot. There's a ground ball in the hole, that's a base hit. This is going to score two. Here it comes Walker with the second run. 10-3 Frontier. Two run single by Ring. She has three RBIs on the day. Well, for Frontier playing third base, number 23, CC Green. Green. Not only is Frontier winning the game, they are starting to turn this into a bit of a rout. CC Green steps in. Runners on second and third, two outs. The pitch, in there for a strike. But we have a ways to go. We're not, not putting this in the W column just yet. That's bounced at the play, got away. And this is going to score the 11th run on a wild pitch. One lead now for the Hawks. Green and the wind now. It is blowing harder than it has all afternoon. And now I'm looking at the flagpole in straightaway center field and it is fully extended off the pole, blowing towards the residences over at UMass. Swung on a missed. Two balls and two strikes. On deck is Olivia Vasilio. The 2-2. Two -two. That's through the wickets, back to the plate. Little shuffle pass and safe sliding in is Macy Ring. That makes it 12-3. So a pair of six run innings now. Six in the third, six here in the fourth. And Frontier, at least right now, is cruising. They've scored 12 runs and they are 12 outs away from the win. That pitch is high for ball four. Runner on first with two outs and now we go to the bottom of the order and the right fielder, Olivia Vasilio. She squares to bunt. Nice play by the pitcher, couldn't get the play over at first base. 
And moving up to third is CC Green. Runners on first and third with two outs, so Pupolo was able to glove it and kind of skid it to her knees, as you saw, and then tried a little bit of a shuffle over there. And there it goes down the right field line. Lily Spencer back to the top of the order. And she hits a ground ball down the shortstop. Gloved, throws away as the defense has really come undone. Another one has scored, another one may score. Here comes the throw, she is safe. Two runs, they go to third, they got her there. But two more runs scored on that play to make it, get this folks, 14 to three in favor of Frontier as we head now to the bottom of the fourth inning. This is Frontier Community Access Television. A six run third and an eight run fourth as Frontier sitting pretty right now. 14-3 Hawks as the Hurricanes come to bat here in the last half of the fourth inning of a seven inning game. So do the math, 12 outs for Frontier. They're playing nice and loose and easy and free right now. And what I talked about at the very beginning of the broadcast was the defensive effort, executing defensively, and Husek was throwing the ball all around that infield that last half inning. First ball swing, ground ball down the shortstop from her knees, and he safe at first base. An attempted play there by the shortstop, Macy Wayne throwing from her knees in a low throw, so reaching first base was that leadoff batter here. Katie Brayman. Lauren Fauche, the left fielder now batting. One run first with nobody out, but Husek has a lot of work to do here. There's a ground ball down to first, that's a foul ball. Well, and if you're Husek and you're even thinking about getting back into the game, you can't look at it as that you're down by 11 runs in the middle of the inning. What you're looking at is just trying to get runners on base, then get some runs, and then just sort of take it from there. Quick shot at first. Back in there safely. Yeah. This is the bottom of the order, by the way, for Husek here on the fourth. Raymond on first, there's a base hit in the center field. So the first two have reached here on the fourth inning for Husek. And we go to the bottom of the order, and Abby Bird, the second baseman. Not an especially hard hit ball there, but well placed right in the center field. Here's the pitch, and that's hit into left field and deep in front of the wall. Walker makes the catch, gets it in. Runners will hold at first and second, so there's one down now here in the fourth inning. Back to the top of the order, and Syra Bradley. Now batting playing third base, number seven, Rylan Wittick. Wittick. Bradley, sorry, Bradley. Bradley gets set, and there's a poke in the left field. That's a single. Walker gloves it, gets it in. Base is loaded now with one out. And an opportunity for Husik here potentially to uh, make some inroads here. But again, they're down big. 14 to three. Rylan Witek, good hitting third baseman, steps in. There's a ground ball down towards second base. Glove there, a quick shot at first. Got the out there, but the run scores. That makes it 14 to four. Batting for the Hurricanes, the pitcher number four, Maddie Puffalo. Puffalo. And Puffalo, the pitcher, now steps in. And now Coach Dean goes to the mound, talking to Olivia and the rest of the girls there. Now I'm sure when you're facing this much of a deficit, I mean, sometimes in softball you like to play small ball, you like to 
lay down bunts, get the infield moving around, but you certainly don't want to give away any outs. You're playing with so few outs here. Right now, they, they've got 11 outs to work with and a 10-run deficit. So the idea is, you know, put the ball in play, get the defense moving around, but not so much by the bunt. Running-wise, yeah, you'll be aggressive, but not in this case. Runners on second and third with one out. Pupilo, the pitcher, steps in. Here's the pitch. In there for a strike. 0 and 1. The 0 1. A little bit low. 1 and 1. Ground ball to short, and another, this happened earlier too, where he had a runner go right into the shortstop, Macy Ring. And that'll do it, that'll retire the side. Another interference play. And I'll tell you, Macy Ring saying, every time I go to field the ground ball, I'm gonna be looking to get run over by someone. We go to the top half of the fifth inning here at UMass Amherst in our score, Frontier 14 and Husik 4. This is Frontier Community Access TV. Fifth inning for the Frontier Red Hawks, the pitcher, number nine, Olivia Dean. Dean. And we are back here in Amherst, UMass, Frontier, with a 14-4 lead over Husik here. They try to make it to championship Saturday. That pitch is low. And a 3-0 count to the leadoff batter. Doubling as the pitcher, Olivia Dean. Natalie Dinkovitz is on deck. This pitch is hit in the air in the center field, tracking back. And putting it away is Syra Bradley. One out for the Hawks here in the fifth inning. We play seven inning games here, so Frontier nine outs away from the big win. After Natalie, we'll see Maddie Fifield, and if anyone can reach, Ariana Walker. Pitch is in there for a strike. Hampshire is the odds-on favorite to win the D2 title. Strong, strong softball program each and every year. They're right up there. Uh, well, I was going to say right up there with Turner's Falls. Not the case. No one's at the level of Turner's Falls. But Hampshire, traditional power. You got Mount Everett. And now Frontier, a team that when the tournament began, few if any people outside their own dugout were talking about them as a, being a major threat. But here they are. They are on the doorstep of a Western Mass final. That pitch got away. Two balls and one strike. One out. Nobody on the pitch. Swung on a miss. Strike two. Three and two the count. The wind up, the pitch. Ground ball down the short. A nice stretch by the first baseman, but running it out all the way, and Natalie reaches. One out, runner on first base. Hit number 13 of the afternoon for Frontier. Yeah, 13 hits. That is called getting it done big time. 
Here's the pitch to Fifefield down to second. Quick shuffle pass to second. Nope, thrown away. Too high, reaching safely. So now there's two on with one out. Batting for Frontier, playing left field number three, Ariana Walker. Walker. And here's Ariana Walker. She's been in the middle of it all. She had a huge hit, a two-run double in that third inning. When Frontier scored six, the Hawks followed that up with eight in the fourth. First and second with one out. Now the catcher, Bishop, out to talk to Pupolo. And we definitely want to thank all of our underwriters making it possible for FCAT to be here at the ballpark here this afternoon. And it looks like Chris and the crew will, in fact, be here on Saturday. I don't want to jinx it, but at least right now it looks like FCAT will be back here on Saturday. The pitch to Walker. And it's a ball. 1-0. and oh. Walker will be followed by Mandy Fuller. Frontier 14. Usyk four. This pitch is pop foul down the first base side out of play. One and one the count. Well, Franklin County already has representation in the Western Mass Final t on Saturday, tomorrow. That would be the team that's seemingly always there. The Turners Falls Thunder. Base hit up the middle. This is going to score the run. 15-4. They go to third gutter there for the second out. RBI single by Walker. Fightfield is out at third after Dinkowitz scored. And the Hawks now have that 11-run lead again. 15-4. 14 hits in this softball game here today. And it looks like uh, we're going to get a pitch runner for uh, for Wonker. I think maybe we're going to start getting some. Uh, yeah, Chloe Cutting has come out. So it's 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 more than just a, a it's more than a case of just running for Walker. Walker might be out of the game here because he's built up such a big lead here. Number eleven, Chloe Cutting. Yeah, running. I think Ariana's done Walker. for the afternoon. Cutting. Great job. I mean, again, she was in the middle of everything. Big effort by Ariana. There are two outs here. And the batter now is uh, Mandy Fuller. And that's uh, Chloe Cutting, the runner on first base. The scoreboard still shows one out, but the, there was, yeah, no, they just put it up. Two outs. And that pitch is high. One and one. <laughs> Gotta love Macy Ring, the shortstop. She's on deck. She's like, let's go! As if it was a one run game, or as if they were trailing by several runs. I mean, they're cruising right now, and she, she wants more. That pitch is low, two and one. Fuller back in there. The two one pitch, that one rides high. Three and one, runner on first, that's cutting. Two outs here, 15 to four, Frontier. The wind up the pitch, hitting the air to center field and a diving attempt, unable to come up with it, but a, doing a good job of keeping it in front of her was Bradley. So a single for Fuller and now here comes Macy Ring with two on and two out. And the base umpire, B.J. Guerin, is going to go out and check with the center fielder. I mean, she kind of went into a dive and took the softball off the body, checking to see if she's okay. She is. And the hits keep on coming. 15 runs on 15 hits for the Hawks. That is extraordinary. I mean, you talk about bringing your bats to the game. <laughs> You'll see this during the regular season, but they're going up against a very, very solid Berkshire program, and they are having no trouble getting on base. This pitch is fouled back to the screen. Owen won the count by ring. CC Green is on deck. 
And it looks like Coach Dean is gonna start filtering in some bench players here soon. Again, we, we do believe that Walker, who just got uh, run for, will be done. And I think Chloe Cutting, who's been a courtesy runner a couple of times today, looks like she'll be out there defensively this next half inning. We'll let you know when we get there. The pitch is swung on a missed. And it's an 0-2 count now to ring. Round ball down the third. Nice strong throw there. Whitech to Bremen, and that retires the side. The Frontier tacks on another run. And we now go to the last half of the fifth inning. It's Frontier 15, Husik 4. This is Frontier Community Access TV. Well, as suspected, we have a new left fielder. Ariel Walker is done for the afternoon. Chloe Cutting is now the left fielder for the Frontier Red Hawks as Husa comes to bat here. Last half of the fifth inning of this seven inning game. And Frontier with an 11 run lead, 15 to four. Six runs in the third, eight in the fourth, and a single tally in the fifth. First ball swinging, that'll be a base set to left field by Worley, the right fielder, so one pitch. And a runner on first base. Now batting for the hurricane. And the here comes stop, Logan, Logan Stansfield, Stansfield, the shortstop. Stansfield. Frontier nine outs away from advancing to championship Saturday. Continuing an amazing run by Frontier Athletics over the last few years. We all know about girls volleyball, soccer teams. There's another base hit to left. So two pitches, and that one's going to get through cutting, and the runner will move up to third base. So, runners on second and third with nobody out here in the fifth the inning. Plane, the catcher, 15, and and uh, Riley, Bishop. Riley Bishop, the catcher, Bishop. will step in. But the Frontier Athletic Program in recent times just winning programs all the way around. And now it's softball that has joined the fray. That's a called strike at the letters, 0-1. On deck, Katie Brayman. Next pitch hit deep in the air to left field. Cutting his back. She's not going to catch this one over her head. This is going to score two runs. Two run double. Bishop. And it's now 15 to 6. Now batting for the Hurricanes, playing first base, number eight, Katie Brayman. And still nobody Brayman. out. So still a nice, comfortable, comfortable advantage so far for the Hawks. Brayman batting that pitch is high. 1-0. On deck, Lauren Fauché. Here's the pitch, and this one's great in the air into right center field. And caught out there. Nicely done there by the right fielder, Vesselio. That'll be the first out of the inning. And the runner holds on second base. Fauche. Now batting. And she takes it for a ball, one in oh. One out, runner on second base, 15 to six in favor of the Red Hawks. That pitch is high, it's two and oh. And if you're Husik, you know you just wanna finish this game strong. Put up some tallies, maybe put a little bit of a scare into the Hawks, but Frontier firmly in control, eight outs away from the win, in there for a strike. And the count now goes to two and one. Very blustery day here, but now the sun has just come out for the first time since the game began. It's been kind of a bright overcast, but this is the first time we've actually seen the sun. This pitch is fouled back, and now the count goes to two balls and two strikes. The 2-2 pitch. 
Strike three. Shot at second base. Nice play there by the second baseman Fuller to pull down that throw. It nearly ended up in the center field. So that'll be the second out of the inning. Now batting for the Hurricanes. Second and number nine ball. batter, Abby second Bird. baseman Abby Bird. Bird hit the ball last time up, hit a deep fly ball to center field that was put away for an out. And she takes a called strike. So nice job here, really, by Olivia Dean. You know, she had threw two pitches this inning, gave up two hits. Gave up the uh, two-run hit. Started thinking, well, what's, what's going on here? But she has settled in nicely. This one's going to hit in the left field, and that's going to drop for a hit. That's going to score another run. RBI single for Bird. As scoring was uh, Riley Bishop, the catcher. And makes it 15-7. to seven. Eight-run frontier lead. And a meeting on the mound now for the Red Hawks. Well, the scoreboard out in left field has it at 15 to three. That is incorrect. It is 15 to seven. Let's see if they can correct that for us. I think some of the crowd here has noticed that they don't have the correct score up there. But there are two outs here. There's a runner only on first base. Again, Frontier, you know, they're still firmly in control. The Hurricanes now have uh, begun to hit the ball just a little bit here. They scored a single run in the first, two in the third, one in the fourth. And they have scored three runs here. This inning. Top of the order, and Bradley with a deep fly ball to center field, back, back, and it's caught for the third out. Dankowitz tracks it down and gloves it. A hard hit ball. Nice rally there though by Husik. We now go to the top half of the sixth inning in our score, Frontier 15, Husik 7. This is Frontier Community Access TV. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer driven networking for your business. Software driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773 8706. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials across from the common in the center of South Deerfield. Maddie Pupolo back on the mound for Husik. Frontier at the plate with CC Green, the third baseman. She'll be followed by Vasilio, and then back to the top of the order. Here's the windup in the pitch. And that is in there for a ball one and oh. Frontier now six outs away from claiming victory. 15 to seven as our score, a much higher scoring game than we really expected. And that pitch is in there for a strike. And the count goes to one and one. Frontier with 15 hits on the afternoon. And if you're from a Husik perspective, you're thinking we've scored seven on seven hits. That should be enough to get it done most days. Not today though. Ground ball down to second. Bird to Bremen. Quickly one out here in the sixth. And here comes Olivia Vasilio. Junior right fielder. She actually began the game on the bench. It was a courtesy runner early on and then played right field the rest of the way. She squares to bun, lays it down, first base, uh, third base side. Wow. 
She can pick them up and put them down. She beat that easily. She was well past the bag when the throw came down so there. The top of the order for the Red Hawks. We'll be catching number Speed 10. is an Olivia asset. Spencer. Spencer. Nice play there by Olivia. So she's on first base with one out. Top of the order, Lily Spencer. And she's the one that got the Frontier offense going early in this game. Third inning, a three-run home run. Just a bomb to left field to tie the game. It's been all Frontier since then. This one's hit hard. Right center field. This is going to go down for a hit. They're going to wave the runner in. Here's the throw to the plate. Not in time. 16-7 to Red Hawks. Lily Spencer with an RBI double. For and you just knew that Vasilio was going to score with that great speed. She scored easily from first. The throw was to the plate, but really they had little choice, a little chance of getting her. Michaela Santos will be the courtesy runner now for the catcher, Spencer. And here's Olivia Dean, the pitcher. Frontier 16, who 6 7, one out here on the sixth. Dean squares to bunt, pulls it back as that pitch came in high. 1-0. Oh. On deck is Natalie Dinkowitz. Now we'll see if Frontier can put up a couple more markers here. And we could see some bench players get in there. So looking very much like we'll have two Franklin County teams here at the softball diamond at UMass on Saturday. This one is a fly ball to center field put away there by Bradley. Now batting the center fielder, number 21, Natalie Dinkowitz. And Dinkowitz will now step in on the right side. Two outs, runner on second base. That is the courtesy runner, Santos, who scored a run earlier in the game as a runner. 16 to seven frontier. The pitch, a little bit low, one in all. And Husik comes up for their bat, that bat in the sixth inning. They are going to have uh, Wytak up. Here's the pitch. Hard grounder down the shortstop. Bird to Brayman. That retires the side. The Frontier picks up another run. We go to the last half of the uh, sixth inning. And our score now, Frontier 16 to 6 7 on Frontier Community Access Television. Jeff Terrell and the FCAT crew here. The executive producer, Kevin Murphy. Megan is alongside, and right above me, I'm right behind the backstop here, by the way, at Sartino Field, and we got my boy Alec, right over my head, I believe. Megan, right, right up here, he's somewhere, right, right over our heads. He's right up there, yeah. Pleased to be bringing you what has been a frontier afternoon, almost from the beginning. They did fall behind early, but they have been cruising since then. Whitech, the third baseman, number two batter for Husik batting. Frontier needs six outs with a nine run lead. I like their chances. One and one the count. It'll be Whitech, Pupilo, and Worley. Two, three, four batters scheduled here in the sixth. Pitch is fouled away. One ball and two strikes. What a game for this offense, though. I mean, everybody got in on it. And if they can bring that kind of effort on Saturday afternoon, they may very well win that Western Mass title. Ground ball down the short, slight bobble, and that was just enough to allow Wytech to reach first base. So the leadoff runner on for Husik here in the sixth inning. In fact, on two pitches, they had runners on first and second last half inning. And they were able to score three runs. If they're able to score three or more runs this half inning, that might make things a little interesting. Pupilo the pitcher. Here's the pitch, she squares to bunt, fouled at the plate. Well, I talked a little bit about this last inning. She squared to bunt. I just don't know. If you're down by nine runs and you have only six outs to work with, do you really want to give away an out there? I think you just have to swing the bat. Swing in here, popped up, 
And the third baseman, Green, comes over. CC takes it over the shoulder. That's the first out of the inning. And Frontier now is five outs away from victory. Playing right field, number 17, Kelsey Worley. Kelsey Worley, the right fielder, steps in. Wytek, the runner on first with one out. The pitch. Hammer on the ground, the third. They could get two. No, they're going to go to first base. They get the second out there. And now the runner is hung up between second and third. They got her in a rundown. She's going to try to keep this rundown going. Oh, she's going to sneak back in there. Nice job there. That was not a good play and then a great play by Wytek, the runner. She go way around third, got in a rundown, but was able to keep the rundown going long enough to duck back in there. But now there are two outs with a runner in scoring position for okay, Logan Stansfield. Number 13, Logan Stansfield. Stansfield. Frontier, four outs away from championship Saturday. Yeah, pitch is low for a ball, one and oh. Stansfield can keep it going. Kylie Bishop, a really good batter, will hit next. They've got the rally caps on over in the Husik dugout. In their first strike, one and one. The girls have their batting helmets on backwards. <laughs> They're desperate to get back into this game, but they are running out of time. The pitch, swung on a missed. One and two. And a delayed steal as Whitehead kind of waited as Frontier was a little bit asleep at the wheel there. But kind of inconsequential. It's almost like a steal with uh, defensive indifference. But the runner is that much closer to home plate. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on a miss, strike throughout, foul tip. The ball did get away from uh, the catcher, Spencer, but it was a foul tip anyway. So it will continue to be one and two with two outs. Runner on third, Frontier with the big advantage here. They had consecutive innings, folks, of eight and six runs. And that'll usually get it done. This is hitting the air high in the shallow left. And it's gonna fall, collision, that's cutting. And the shortstop ring collided. Everybody is okay, the run did score to make it 16 to eight. And play will continue. They, they need to check on ring. She looked like she took the worst of it. And she's been run into by Husik base runners twice here today. Yeah, is Macy okay? She's walking uh, towards the uh, pitching circle, you see. She's gonna take him. I think she's okay, but she's just, uh, you know, they're gonna walk her back to shortstop. She's tough. <laughs> she is tough. She, you know, softball, baseball can be at times physical. They're not known as contact sports, but don't try to tell that to Macy Ring. She's endured a lot of contact from the opposition and in that case from her teammate. So two outs with a runner on first base, 16 to eight in favor of Frontier. And here comes a dangerous batter, Riley Bishop, the catcher. Takes the Pachai, quick shot at first, back in there safely. The runner down there is Stansfield, 16 to eight. Two outs in the six, so Frontier needs just to record four more outs to get the W. Here's the pitch, and that is hammered foul deep down the line and left. Home run distance, but well foul. Bishop back in there. Dean delivers. Round ball wide a third. Oh, she's right on Olivia's pitches, but she's way out ahead of them. And now she has two strikes on her. If Bishop can keep the line moving, Katie Brayman, another good hitter, would bat next. Here it is. Hit in the air into shallow left. Here comes Cutting, can't come up with it. Runner will move up to second base. That is Stansfield. Stansfield on second, Bishop on first, another hit. That's the ninth hit of the game for the Hurricanes. For the Hurricanes playing first base, number eight, Katie Brayman. And Katie Brayman now will bat. Two outs here. 
in the sixth inning. 16-8 Frontier. Usyk needs a big hit here. That pitch is fouled back and Lily Spencer goes headlong to, to dive and catch it. Oh, I, she was just talking to the umpire what she was saying. She wanted to catch it on the reflect, uh, on the, uh, yeah, she, she said, I could play it off the screen, right? Well, no, not really. <laughs> Lily, let's try Here's the pitch, Hammer on the ground. Green with a nice stop, strong throw, got her. And they work out of it. They do surrender that run, but we now go to the top half of the seventh and final inning. And our score now, Frontier 16-8, 16, 16, and Husek 8 on Frontier Community Access TV. Frontier coming up here on the top half of the seventh inning. They lead by a score of 16 to eight. 16 runs on 16 hits for the Hawks. Eight runs on nine hits for the Hurricanes. Hurricanes, they were off to a three nothing lead at the end of two innings. They scored a single run of the first, two more in the second. The Frontier had been uh, stranding runners in scoring position for the first two innings. It was looking a little ominous at, the, at that point. As it turns out, they had nothing to worry about. Six runs in the third. Eight in the fourth, single runs in the fifth and sixth innings. And they lead 16 to eight. Playing first base, number 15, Maddie Fifield. Fifield. Maddie Fifield will lead off for Frontier. It'll be Fifield, Fuller, and Ring scheduled to bat, but I, I already see they already have a pinch batter on deck. We'll let you know who that young lady is in just a minute. The first Fifield. And she takes it low for a ball. On deck is Emily Sullivan Joyce, a freshman. She'll be batting next. And the pitch, and this is fouled off on the right side. And the count goes to one and one. Frontier just needs three more defensive outs to advance to championship Saturday. They've done it in baseball recently, have not done it. They've done it in football as well. Line drive taken down there by Brayman, one out. But softball, no. All right, so here's the pinch batter, Emily Sullivan Joyce will now be batting. That's an Ariana Walker's spot. So she's going to get her first at bat. Just the ninth grader. And here's the pitch to Sullivan, and this is swung on and fouled away. Tom, Tom. 0-1 oh to Sullivan. We have a quick stoppage of play as they are talking to the home plate umpire, getting clarification about who the batter is for whom. And she's Sherry Webb, who's been a part of the MIAA tournament scene here in Western Mass for many years. She's working the PA. You've been hearing her voice in the background. And now we're getting clarification. Now the home plate umpire is going to go over to talk to Coach Dean. Here comes that wind again. <laughs> this kind of feels like one of those days where um, it kind of feels like a day early season softball game, you know, one of the local diamonds after school. You know, it's kind of cold, windy, not especially feeling like it's uh, softball weather. That's what this feels like, except for the fact that it's June 14th. <laughs> All right, so they're working out the order in the pinch batter here, Sullivan. So they're trying to figure this out, and I think I mean, they could either do this, or they could just draw a calculus problem in, in the dirt and try to figure that out. <laughs> I'm not sure which would be easier to figure out, doing uh, a calculus formula in the dirt here behind home plate, or figuring out the batting order here. Now the home plate umpire is talking to the base umpire, B.J. Guerin. 
And around and around we go. Now they're going to go to the Husik bench. You're right. Yeah, they're they're pulling Sullivan back because cutting for the Red Hawks. cutting was the courtesy runner 11, twice cutting. in the game, but she cutting. went in. She went in as a courtesy runner, replacing Ariana Walker, and then she took and and I believe that Coach Dean had said that she'll be taking over for Walker in left field. So that wasn't being a courtesy runner. That was being a pinch runner for the left fielder. Cutting, so we're, we're at Walker's spot in the lineup. So I, I think they have it right. We had Chloe Cutting was a courtesy runner a couple of times and then she was a technically a pinch runner for Walker who then left the game. And Cutting ended up taking over in left field. So Sullivan was batting, now it, are they going to charge an out for batting out of order, or does it happen? I'm not sure what I'm not sure what the rule is. If a runner, I know at the major league baseball level, which is it's it's not an it's not an apples to apples comparison, obviously. The cutting will bat, but I do know that if you're announced as a as a batter in baseball and you're batting out of order, then that batter is out. So cutting is up there with one out and swings through that one and misses. It's 0-1. So I think there is one out. We're getting, yeah, it's incredibly confusing inning. Now the home plate umpire is going to call. I, are they going to say there should there be two outs here now? We're thinking two outs, Megan. I think yeah, two outs because yeah. So yeah, we are. There should be two outs. Yes. So, so yeah, it was a batting out of order situation, evidently. Very confusing situation here. I would have gone with the calculus myself. Even I may have figured that out sooner than we figured this out. <laughs> Here's the pitch to cutting. Yeah, it's a ball high. Scoreboard still says one out. Poor Me Megan is running our scoreboard for FCAT. And, uh, <laughs> Because the umpire obviously is not consulting with us, saying, okay, I've got, here's the deal. In there for a strike. Now we know for sure there are two outs. Megan is very confident we have two outs now. She's done a great job here today. And here comes the second baseman, Mandy Fuller. And that pitch is outside. The yeah, Frontier does not score in this inning. It will be the first time they haven't scored since the second. They scored in four consecutive innings. And in two of the innings, it was for a combined 14 runs. And that's what won the game here for them, if they can hang on. Popped up in the infield. Second baseman Bird is over to put it away. And the side is retired. We go to the last of the seventh inning. Last call for the Hurricanes. They trail Frontier 16-8 on Frontier Community Access TV. Well, I just want to take a minute here to thank uh, everyone at Fr Frontier Community Access TV for uh, affording me the chance to uh, kind of parachute in and broadcast the ball game here today. I want to especially thank Chris Collins, Kevin Murphy, Megan, and Alec. And I hope we can uh, cross paths again. Leading off, number 11, Lauren Fauché. Fauché. Lauren Fauché, the left fielder, will bat. It's the Frontier Red Hawks now, and the pitcher Olivia Dean. Three outs away from playing for a Western Match Championship. What a tournament run it has been. What a performance here today, especially offensively. In there for a strike, one and one. And this Frontier crowd's really, they are feeling it. They are that close. But you know Husik's not going to go down without a fight. This is hit in the air in the center field. Dropping quickly. That's in there for a hit. Lead off single for Fauché. And the second baseman, Abby Bird, in number nine batter, will step in. Bird has uh, Bird's hit the ball well today. She's made some nice, solid contact. If you're, if you're Husik, there's no such thing as a eight-run home run, obviously. 
you just need to get on base and keep the line moving, which is what Frontier did. That's how Frontier got that big lead. Here's the windup and the pitch. That's a fair ball just inside the bag at third. First and second, nobody out here. We go to the top of the order for the Hurricanes. And to the top of the order, Syra Bradley. Well, for the last three innings, the tone of my comments has been frontier victory inevitable. I'm just sort of waiting for the outs. To count. I started the out countdown at 12. And we're still at three here. So the job not quite done. That pitch in the dirt for a ball. Bradley, Whitek on deck. Pupilo, the pitcher, will bat. 1-0 and the count to Bradley. The pitch in the dirt, 2-0. and If you're Olivia Dean, just play catch with your catcher, Lily Spencer. Just play catch. Nice, easy delivery. Let it, let it, just fire it away. Just like that. That's a little low, though. 3-0 and the count. Certainly, just throw strikes here. Don't want to put any runners on here. Got a nice big cushion here. The pitch. That's in there for a strike. Three and one the count. Bradley looks down at the third base coach. It's a practice rip right there. She's ready to go. Hits out of that deep crouch you can see there. She really lays low. Here's the pitch. Ground ball wide a third. Count goes full, three and two. Two on, nobody out. 16-8 Frontier. Those last couple of runs they put on, you know, I focused a lot on the big, big outbursts in the third and the fourth, but those single runs in the fifth and sixth are, are pretty big. Swung on a miss, strike three. First out of the inning, two outs away from championship Saturday for the Hawks. And the crowd above us starting to stomp their feet on the bleachers here. They are ready to erupt. Rylan Witek with two on and one out. Pitches in there for a strike, 0 oh and one. A lot of Frontier students here today. They wanna come back here Saturday and watch these girls again. The 0-1 oh pitch, called, strike two. Got the black on the outside part of the plate. It is 0-2. Oh No balls, two strikes, just outside, one and two. Pupilo is on deck, followed by Kelsey Worley. One out here. But they would love to get a ground ball double play, perhaps right here. The pitch, line drive, right center field, that's down for a hit. This is going to score a run to make it 16 to nine. Runners on second and third with one out. So Frontier's advantage is still at seven runs with one out. And the pitcher, Natty Pupero, she struggled in the circle here today. She got hit hard. And defensively, the team behind her had some difficulties too, but a chance to get a little bit of redemption here with a big hit. A single here would score too. But again, the margin probably, probably too steep for the Canes. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That is low, one and one. Kelsey Worley, the right fielder, is on deck. She's the cleanup batter. The wind up in the pitch. And that is fouled back to the screen. There's two strikes now. Tail of two benches right now, the Hoosa girls are screaming, let's keep this going, let's keep our season going. Somehow, some way, let's keep it going. Frontier screaming, let's end it right here. Popped up in the air, right center field, that's down. That is going to score one run. Abby Bird scores 
into third base is Wytek. And makes it 16 to 10. And Coach Dean now is gonna go to talk with young Miss Dean in the infield. Yeah, they have two outs to get here. They still lead by six. There's one out, runners on first and third. And I told you that Husik was not going to go down without a fight, but those two bad innings are, have put them in a tough spot here. But if they can keep this going, this could get a little interesting here. Who knew? that we would see such a high scoring game here this afternoon at UMass, but here it is. A combined 26 runs, a combined 29 hits. And here comes Kelsey Worley, the cleanup batter. And listen now, the Husa crowd getting into it. We're not giving up. All right, conference over on the mound. The pitch from Olivia Dean in there for a strike. That's a good way to counterpunch. You know, they're starting to hit you a little bit. Just lay a strike right in there. Owen won the count. Hit in the air in the center field. Dankowitz lines it up, makes the catch. Runner will tag from third, the plate at the plate. Safe. 16-11. So it is a five run lead now for the Hawks. But now there are two outs. So now the Hurricanes right up against it. Olivia Dean pitching to Logan Stansfield to pitch in there for a strike. And the Hawks are two strikes away. Hampshire or Wakona await. The winner here. The windup, the pitch. Swung on a miss. Quick shot at first. Safe. Ball got away, but runner can't move up. But Stansfield now down 0 and 2. And listen to the crowd. Frontier is that close. Ball high, one and two. Dean, back on the rubber. The one, two. Two and two. Spencer held it for a second, it was high. Runner on first, two outs, two and two the count. Frontier by five. Ground ball wide a third, count remains two and two. Huge crowd here at UMass, not only fans from Husik and Frontier, but obviously waiting for game number two, which is gonna start late because of the lateness of this one. Hampshire and Wakona. The two-two pitch, popped in the air in the right field. It's over! The Frontier Red Hawks are going to championship Saturday. The seven seeded Frontier Red Hawks have knocked off number three Husik here at UMass by a score of 16 to 11. They will play either number one Hampshire or number four Wakona for the championship and opposite emotions as I look at the handshake line that they're gonna, they're gonna have right here. Several of the Husik girls overcome with emotion. They wanted to be here Saturday, they will not be here Saturday. Now they are waiting for Frontier to come by and the Frontier girls absolutely elated. Great job by them today, great offensive performance in particular as they win it by a score of 16 to 11. Again, my thanks to Chris Collins, to Kevin Murphy, to Megan and Alec, I'm Jeff Terrell. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon for Frontier Red Hawks softball right here on Frontier Community Access TV. So long, everybody.